we are going to be doing our timing belt procedure. All right, Dave, what marker are we going to line up on here? Middle one, which kind of hard. Yeah, that would be it. You just pass the timing marks. That's the rotation of the engine. And we sit right at the middle one. Yeah. Which, wow, those are stampings kind of off. There we are. There's our marks. These ones have been painted, which is good for demonstration purpose. But you line the tip of your uh, little thing on the bell housing at the middle mark. Sometimes you may see this tip is broken off, but the inner edge of this indentation here will line up the same. Our engine is lined up at the three middle marks on the flywheel. These marks are not to be mistaken for top dead center because none of the pistons are at top dead center. The pistons are in fact at the center of their bore on both sides, all four of them. And this is where we, uh, once the crank is set to this position, this is where we align our camshafts. We are going to start per the timing belt procedure on the left side of the car, which would be in the USA, the driver's side of the cam, the distributor side of the cam. We are going to line up our dot to the upper notch on the timing belt cover. For the sake of maintenance and demonstration purposes, we have removed the timing belt cover on this car and you're going to align your mark to the seam of the valve cover if you can see that directly across the tooth of the cam pulley that is our upper mark that represents the mark on the timing belt cover these are timing belts in the box Yes. please note the difference in size of the timing belts as this will determine which belt you're installing on which side. The belts are two different lengths. If you were to order them individually, they would have separate part numbers. A lot of times you order them as a set, it'll be consecutive part numbers. This set came in this box, which also came with all the tensioner and idler pulleys on the front of the engine, as you see. All right, we're gonna install the longest belt first. Yes. We're gonna start by lining up the oil pump pulley, if you see the little notches, if you can turn that in this direction, that'll allow you to slip the belt through there without it jamming all over the front lip of the pulley. Oh yeah. It's a lot easier on that EJ motor. Okay, now we are at the top of the crank. We are gonna be careful to not move the crank. Uh, go ahead and slide it around the uh, tensioner pulley. And then you're gonna put the belt on from the bottom side of the cam first. And you are gonna line these teeth up without moving the crank and without moving the cam. And over here from this position, you can lift up on the tensioner pulley to relieve the slack of the belt and wrap it around the rest of the way. So when you install your tensioner pulleys, you don't want to torque them down as um, for demonstration purposes, Dave has also already done. Just loosen up them just to snug. And now we can start from the bottom here. You can get it from there, Dave. Keep it taut on the bottom side, wrap it around the lip of the pulley, being careful not to bend or cause shit that it says here on this um, instructional script on the belt. We have our belt on there, which went on beautifully. That Sometimes you're going to have more of a fit, but that was pretty perfect. So now we have the belt on there. We can take on the slack side, which is taken up by the pulley, and pull down on it, and we're still squeeze the pulley center. down, and grab our pulley. Dave, if we had a spanner, what you're going to do is you're going to rotate that to the left, put a little hand torque on it to take up the slack off the bottom side of the belt, and then tug the pulley down. If you want to, you can put a little pressure by hand on the tensioner pulley as you tighten down the bolt. Uh, this uh, approximates if my figures are correct, I don't know, something like 17 foot-pound of torque, I'm not sure, on the belt itself, on the cam pulley with the spanner wrench.
All right, now our belt is on there completely. Be careful with the torque on the bolts as you don't want to strip them out as they are steel bolts and aluminum thread. Okay, we still have our center flywheel marks lined up. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a 22 millimeter ratchet or 7 eighths and turn the crank one full rotation. When we turn the crank one full rotation, the center marks in the flywheel will return and the cam will rotate at exactly half the ratio of the crank and the dot will be pointing down. You're wrong. Yeah, go ahead and uh, rotate the crank. You rotate the crank one full rotation. You will be fighting through engine compression the whole way. 360 degrees. When the crank rotates entirely once, this cam will rotate half of a turn and will point down. This is where a lot of people that work on these cars that are not familiar with this or uh, don't understand that it's a single cam with two cylinder banks, therefore two cams since it's horizontal. They will assume both dots to be up, which we did start with, but they would put both belts on at the same time and not do the crank rotation in between. These cams are phase 180 off. That's where the first cam rotation comes in. And the first rotation on the crank comes in to phase our cam. All right, now that we've rotated our crank full 360 degrees, our cam is now facing 180 degrees from the direction it was rotating to the right. And to verify our alignment, we will have our center marks of the flywheel and our dot will be pointing at exactly the seam on the valve cover gasket. And our alignment so far is correct. Now that we have our first belt installed, we can go on with the second belt installation. We are going to come around by the crank and install our belt across the crank pulley. And now, on this side of the belt, the top side of the belt is the drive side. So we are gonna to wanna to line up our, make sure our dot is lined up, and align the top half of the belt onto the crank, the uh, cam pulley, and the teeth should line up. And we're gonna wrap the belt around, and we are gonna tuck our belt onto the tensioner pulley here. Hold that down while sliding the belt onto the pulley. It may give you a little bit of fit. You can just kind of walk it and wiggle it around. These belts are going on beautifully. Now, once again, we can hand torque our uh, cam sprocket all the way to the left and push up on the uh, tensioner pulley and torque down our bolts. This is part of the, uh, the benefits of running with open belt covers. Since uh, doing maintenance on your car is more likely anyway than the life of the parts themselves you uh, would have easier maintenance by not having as much time involved having the inner covers out of these timing belt allows you to grab onto that the cam pulley and you have full access to move things around and it really saves you a lot of work it saves you from taking off the crank pulley it saves you from taking off the alternator and AC assembly and this saves you this type of labor for both the water pump and the oil pump it allows you to do the water pump without touching any timing belts at all. You just work around what's there in front of you. Now that we have our pulleys on, this is the part where I will torque on the bolts to the cam pulley and go ahead and crank down the pulley, the bolt on the crank pulley. I like to use my electric impact tool for this um, as far as it's the easiest way to smack some torque down on it, but not too much. You can use a torque a torque wrench if you were to jam a bar on the flex plate flywheel, do the punch in the hole on the flywheel trick, or park your car in gear like third gear and lock on the parking brake. You will get a lot of flex that way. Use a torque wrench. If you're going to torque it manually, I recommend some sort of Loctite blue thread locker to keep the uh, tension and torque on the bolt, but to not have too much torque to compromise the thread and stretch. Now that we're done with all of our crank rotations, uh, I find it easiest for me to torque down the uh, crank pulley with an impact tool. I'm going to hear a handy Harbor Freight piece. We put a little bit of torque on there. The shock torque gets good without being ultra torquey. That's what'll do it. Don't need much more than that.